Hello and welcome to another Let's Play. Me, Game of 06 of Echo. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it for free on HIO. But if you want to support people that made this game and are making other games, then you can go through Patreon. I believe it's $3 a month. I have to say, this intro music is kind of interesting because it's like. It feels like a, hey, we're all just kind of hanging out. Having a good time, just chilling, thinking of the good old days, and it is part of that. But from what I know of this game and scene, it kind of feels weird because, like, everything's fine, and we're drifting off to sleep, and I murder him after I murder someone else. Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen that episode that I posted out like what months ago. Anyways, on the last let's play. I think we we already made out with him. I had it listed. Yes, uh, we made out with Leo. And Kudzu told us... Oh yeah, at the train tracks. And Kudzu told us um, that Clint, you know, the crackhead, uh, made some threats. Like, extra threats while he was pretty high. But still, threats nonetheless. And then... We went to go play soccer with TJ, and I think Kudzu as well. So let's reorient at my face. And have this kick-ass guitar playing. How's the audio? It's decent. Actually, I did want to turn it down just a smidge. Little ditty. Anyways. As you reach the field, Kudzu immediately starts jogging the length of it while TJ stretches. <clears throat> I stand there awkwardly for a second, not really sure if I should join him, because since, since that felt a little overboard for something so casual. Oh, you mean uh, stretching and stuff like that? Though also you're at a disadvantage with your tiny little legs. And sorry for hearing banging in the background. Somebody's doing something. At least, I hoped it's casual. No, it's a fight to the death. What do you think it is? Leo rests the soccer ball against his hip as he joins me. Heh. <laughs> They're so eager, huh? Apparently. Well, it's not a bad idea. Don't want to pull anything. That's true. <clears throat> so me and Leo do a few awkward stretches before the other two join us in the middle of the field. So, time to pick teams. There's only four of us. Shouldn't be too hard. You wanna pick? Kudzu looks between us before his eyes settle on me. Chase. Oh, okay. Probably best to keep the lovers off the same team to avoid distraction. At least want a little bit of a challenge. Anyway, I at least. Kudzu gives Leo a little smirk. I blush, but Leo smiles easily, rolling his eyes. It's not like that. Hmm, sure. So, I'm on Leo's team? TJ slides up to Leo's side, and the wolf puts an arm around his shoulders. <clears throat> yep, you're lucky to have me. You know, I'm on my con- You know, you know, I'm in country, and had a war over soccer once. In my country, at a war for soccer once. Right, I think there was something like that. I don't believe you. It's true. Thousands died in the football war. Wait, did you call it football? Because it seems pretty confusing, since you're really, since you're really into the other football. I live here now, so football is soccer, and football is football. But, if I were to call soccer football, I'd call it football. Wait, what? Puchita. Let's just start. Kudzu looks around. Since there's so few of us, why don't we just play half field? Grab a few rocks and mark the goal. After that's done, we start playing. And, for me, it's pretty much a disaster. TG, of course, dominates all of us. Uwu. He dodged around me with ease, making me look like an idiot as I spin around trying to catch him, falling on my ass more than once. Kudzu's able to hold his own for the most part, 
but TJ gets it past him without too much difficulty. I think the Lynx realizes how badly he's beaten us after a while and starts to ease off. No, you need to be like my father. You need to dominate everybody in sports and intellectual stuff. You don't go easy on kids. He passes it to Leo more often and only really helps and uh, steps in when we get near the goal. Leo, how big, is slow as hell, and I actually managed to steal the ball from him a few times. Steal his balls. I also think it's because he's not taking this seriously at all, because he keeps laughing and slapping me with his tail when I run past. I wonder how you do that, though I guess uh, Chase isn't too fast either. At one point, with a score at like 7-0, I managed to get near, near the goal. TJ jogs in as I kick the ball clumsily, and it's so clear that it misses on purpose that everyone bursts out laughing as it rolls into the net. Oh, that he misses on purpose. TJ frowns. What? That was a great kick, Chase. I lean over, rest my hands on my knees as I gasp for breath. If you're gonna let me score, you have to make it look more convincing than that, man. Also, I'm not five. I can't handle getting my ass kicked. I got it flapped many times, ooh ooh. After a while, we switch up teams, and TJ's on my side, and Kudzu and Leo together. It's a bit more even after that, with me being TJ's handicap and all. After about half an hour we call it quits, and head back to the parking lot, where Leo throws us water bottles. I look at my face as it sits on one of the parking blocks. Oh, those little, like, lift eh, things? Even though it's nearly evening, the weather is still way too damn hot. Leo and TJ are already up again, TJ showing him some moves he had so viciously used on me. I'm glad to see that TJ is somewhat happy again. His ears are up, and he's smiling as you're in circles around Leo. Hey, how am I supposed to learn anything if you're just using them on me? Just trying to make me look dumb, eh? Putita! Sorry, sorry. Alright, first thing we need to do. I noticed Kudzu standing a few feet away, watching along with me. So, I guess you've known Leo since you moved to Echo? Kudzu looks over me before leaning back against Leo's van. Yeah, he saw me moving in and insisted on helping, so that's how I met him. Sounds like Leo. Kudzu takes a swig from his water bottle. He's a good guy. Definitely. So you used to live here, right? In Peyton? Unfortunately, I guess Leo told you. Yeah. I must remember Leo was saying that some bad things happened in the city for the raccoon, so I wonder if I should press or not. Also, um... Is, like, Peyton City? I guess so. Hey, sorry if it seemed like I was making fun of your name a few days ago. It's a cool name. It's just different, you know? Kudzu smirks. No, I know it's weird. You just caught me at a bad time, is all. I spread my legs out, ooh, uh, sighing as my knees plop, pop. Knees pop, ugh. Oh, God. I'm not built for running around. Well, yeah, you're built for swimming. I raise my eyebrows at his bluntness. It's not really a speciesist thing to say, but most people don't often point out a species aptitude. Um, so I guess I wonder why you moved to Echo. It's such a dump. Cuts you silent for a while. In the meantime, we watch Leo fall on his ass after TJ kicks the ball between his legs. People. Huh? People are the reason I left Peyton. Oh. Peyton is technically a small city with just 70,000 people. Okay. So it isn't like. So it's much bigger than, you know, where I used to live. Compared to Pueblo, that's nothing. There's more people there. The more people there are, the worse it is. It's the same everywhere. Ah. Okay. Kudzu goes on. 
Sure, in Echo, there's a hundred shitty people, but in Peyton, there's fifty thousand of them. I prefer Echo. I keep on forgetting to ask what the amount of people, uh, how many people are in Echo, because, like, there's a mall, but I think on Route 65 it said there was, like, less than a hundred people. There couldn't be less than a hundred people. I know this is, like, a small-ass town, but I lived in a town of, like, 5,000. We didn't have a mall. It was fine, though. There was, like, you know, lines of shops. Nice place to look around. His tone is so dark at this point, I don't even respond. Something definitely happened here. It happened here in Peyton, and I don't dare to ask what it was. Something definitely happened here in Peyton. Oh, we're in Echo. No, wait. Yeah, we are in Peyton. Huh. Luckily, I'm, s I'm saving the awkward silence as Leo haphazardly kicks the ball in our direction, and TJ comes running up to us. Damn it. All right. I think that's enough for today. He jogs over, wiping his face. You know, now that there's all this sports talk, I do actually miss Blitzball in um, Final Fantasy X. At first, I hated that game because you're way under leveled when they give you, when they have you play the game. But then, you know, if you take some to the chin and practice for a while, you can actually get your guys to be pretty good. Good thing you can't hear that fan downstairs. Man, I need a shower. You two, you two get go. Yeah, you two get along. I swear I can read. When Kudzu doesn't say anything, I pipe up. Yep. Leo frowns, clearly sensing something's wrong. Well, okay. Anyway, let's go out and get some ice cream. Hell yeah. I've been really craving for it. I stand up slowly, knees popping again, as we all pile into the car. As you drive, TJ continues to stare out the window, but his ears are up, and he doesn't seem so depressed anymore. <clears throat> I lean over towards him. You feeling better? TJ turns to look at me, smiling. Yeah. It was fun playing with you guys. I grin. You're insanely good. He shakes his head. Not compared to the other guys at school. I'm not aggressive enough, but it's fun. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. TJ nods. It's too bad we can't come back and do it again tomorrow. Hmm? Why not? We do live in Peyton, so... Like... I think we live in Peyton, so we could just go there. And maybe Leo and, uh, what's his name, Kudzu can come visit us. I'm crazy about doing it again, but I'm not sure what would prevent it. I mean, this is like a day trip, you know? He looks at me. Well, your project. I frown. I don't think... Hey, what flavor do you guys want? Chucky. Leo practically shouts back at us. I look around. We aren't even at the ice cream parlor yet. It doesn't seem to matter to TJ, though. Ooh, cookie dough. It's been a long time since I've had it. Oh, so it's not soft serve? Really? I didn't think you liked that flavor. Cookie dough is pretty good. And somehow, Leo is able to keep up the conversation about ice cream flavors all the way to the actual ice cream parlor. Oh, it's at the railroad tracks. I sighed the shots I got earlier in the day were too bright. Uh, representative of the sad state of the town that I wanted. The setting sun does a better job capturing the desolation and bittersweet depression of it all. A metaphor for an end, in a way. At least, that's how I hope it comes across. I lean back against the old, rusted car, clicking through the images I'd taken. It feels very quiet, despite the wildlife around me. And so, that's why it's easy for me to pick out the footsteps ahead of, headed my direction. At first, I think it's Leo, and I wonder how he's finished up with the shower so quickly. But then I realize the crunch of dried vegetation is too soft, too light to be Leo. I'm feeling it could be Clint, because you know this game's kind of dark. But, um, <clears throat> could be Kudzu, could be TJ, could be anyone. Uh it's him. Crackhead. I look up, kind of hoping to see Kudzu, but instead I'm greeted with the sight of Clint heading my direction. My grip tightens on the camera, 
watching as he approaches around the bend of the tracks. He doesn't see him at first, and he gets to the tracks. As he gets to the tracks, he hops onto one of the metal rails and balances there, walking along like he's on a tightrope. Does everyone Echo just come here to take a walk? I think about walking around the train car, out of his line of sight, and hide until he passes me. When I'm thinking this, he loses his balance and stumbles off the rail, and that's when he looks up. Of course, I'm the first thing he sees, and we're both just sort of stand there, watching each other. <clears throat> I don't know what to do. Cud said Clint probably didn't remember anything from last night, but I'm not willing to bet on it. It doesn't look like he's even sure who I am, though. His eyes are squinted, almost shut, mouth all screwed up as he scratches his head comically. He leans forward, almost to the point of falling over again, definitely on something. At that point, a look of recognition spreads across his face and his mouth opens wide. Then he starts struggling straight for me. The abruptness of his movement startled me and I almost dropped the camera. I angle myself away from the car, so I'm not backed up against it, and start taking steps as he gets closer. He stops, though, about ten feet away, and points at me. Hey, I know you... Uh... I'm at a loss for what to say. He's wobbling back and forth, his eyes wide open. Your name! There's an awkward pause as I try to determine whether or not he's asking my question, a question. My, my name? Chase? Why did I tell him that? You're Leo's fag friend. Uh, I'm distracted again because that's when I see the handle of a pistol just poking out from the front of the waistband of Clint's jeans. Clint glares. Fucking Leo. Why do you hang out with that creep? I, uh... I'm looking around, trying to decide the best way to escape in case he loses it. I mean, he's always saying shit to me. Always saying shit about my dad. He had a perfect fucking life and rubs it in my goddamn face. I take a few incon innocuous steps back so that the end of the car is right next to me in case I have to duck behind it. I, I don't think Leo's life was that easy. It was pretty bad back in his country. Fucking Beaner comes here to make my fucking life even worse. Couldn't go home and be happy. Couldn't go outside and be happy. I can't be happy anywhere. He sneers at me. And you, you fuck him, don't you? I just stare at him and don't say anything. I feel like anything I say would set him off, but he waits patiently, expecting an answer. Clint. Don't you? He shudders visibly, clenching his eyes shut. Fucking imagine you looking at that his fat ass is disgusting. Why even imagine it? I don't even fucking care that you're fagging around, but with him? If it if I wasn't so afraid of the whole situation, I probably would have laughed just then. I take another step back. Hey, I was actually just about to head out. You know, I'm doing this project, and that's why I'm here. He glares at me. Me and Leo broke up a few years ago. We're just friends. No, oh, that's a new face. You don't know what he's like. The things he did to me. It's way worse than what I ever did to you. What I ever did to you. Huh. But hey, I do need to head out. We can talk about this later. He sees me stepping around the car, and immediately his hand shoots to the handle of his gun. Hey! I freeze, watch his hand, preparing to throw myself to the ground if he pulled it out. At the same time, I'm praying that he's that he'll shoot his dick off and if he does. He glares at me. What the hell are you even doing out here anyway? With shaking hands, I point to the camera around my neck. I, I told you, I'm d doing a project. I try to smile and hold it up. Just about Echo? What the fuck is there to say about it? His hand loosens on the pistol, 
and I managed to steady my voice enough to actually speak. Well, there's a history to it, you know? There's a history to everything. I'm just trying to figure it out. Clint looks around, seeming to forget about his gun. Oh, like this railroad? Yeah, like this railroad. Clint's eyes are vacant as he stares at the ground, and I think about making a run for it again. Oh. I jump as he snaps his head up. My dad once told me that his dad knew a guy that got killed here back in, like, the 50s. <coughs> oh? <coughs> Despite the fact that there's a crazy meth head in front of me with a gun, I still find myself becoming interested. Yeah, like... Some guy was trying to hop on one, like, way back, when that, that's how people would get around. So this guy was trying to hop on this train here, when it was leaving the station, but he missed jumping on. Clint sits down in the dirty and dusty weeds and spreads his legs out over the rails. And he falls down like this, and it runs over his legs. Clint brings both hands down in chopping motions over his thighs. Blood goes everywhere and, yeah, he's dead, right? He looks up at me and I realize he's actually waiting for an answer. I guess his questions are n never rhetorical. Uh, I'd assume so, right? Wrong. They found him a few hours later and somehow the fucker's still alive. Oh. I'm already starting to doubt his story, or at least his, this version of it. Stumps is packed with dirt, so he stopped the bleeding, but he gone crazy by now. He's going on about some creature that came to him and spoke whispers in his ear. Well, at the very least, I can stick this story somewhere slow in the project to keep things somewhat interesting. One of those local urban legend type stuff. But then he goes to the hospital, and they think he's going to live. But he jumps out the fucking window and kills himself. Clint stands up and brushes himself off. My dad used to tell me that story a lot. Not like I wanted to hear it, but he liked telling me things I didn't want to hear. I don't quite know what to say to that, but I want to keep on his good side, so I make a show of putting, uh, pulling a notebook out of my bag. Well, thanks, Clint. That... That actually helps me out a lot. Clint is still off in his own world, staring off at the trees in the distance. It's weird that you need to hear that story, because I come here because of it. For closure? Or something? Because of that guy. Sometimes, I think I see him when I'm, when I'm all high, and I hear things here too. It's scary, but I do it because it's different. In this town, everything's always the same, but you can make it change if you want. At that point, he starts walking again, off the tracks and towards a group of trees. I sadly don't follow him, instead hurry and make my way back to Leo's house. Boy, I have a lot of time to calm down on the walk back. Leo is... Splayed out on his couch, picking through TV dinner on his lap. There you are. I warmed up one for you too, but it's probably cool by now. That's right. I just, uh, put it back in. Leah wants me as I head to the kitchen adjacent to the living room. Hey, what's up? My dinner is sitting on the stovetop, and I make an effort not to wrinkle my nose at the sculpted rib meat covered in barbecue sauce. Watery mashed potatoes complements the gooey mess. Nothing, just tired is all. What was that sound? Oh, on sec. Okay, that sounded like, that sounded like out of the game, and I was like, is my Roomba saying that it's gonna explode in a few seconds? Good on ya, that was... It's really uncomfortable when you play games and there's a realistic sound, or the way it 
does it, it sounds realistic, and you're like, wait, what? What was that? It's like, oh, it's the video game. Just sit there and bang in the microwave and set the timer to two minutes. Let me set my face. As it's warming, I turn back around and lean against the counter and face Leo in the living room. Hey, I was wondering something. Hmm? Leo looks back up at me, ears falling back a little. It's about Clint. Leo's brow furrows. <clears throat> I mean, you guys are at each other's throats. I know there's always been some animosity between you two, but I don't remember it being this bad. I frown. You guys practically want each other dead. Leo pins his ears back while he licks barbecue sauce off his fingers. I don't really know, Chase. If I had to say, I think it would be the drugs. The drugs? Hmm, whatever he's taking, it's pretty hardcore. I mean, he's a goddamn skeleton now, right? Yeah. But it's not like I'm responsible for it. I just treat him like he treats everyone else. I open my mouth, hesitate, and finally ask what's been bothering me. When you were younger, would you say that you bullied him? Yeah, Leo frowns. What's bringing all this up? Nothing. I was just curious is all. Leo starts to smooth down the fur on his head, all poofed out from his shower. I mean, I wasn't nice to him, of course, but he was an asshole to everyone else. Like I said, I did to him what he did to others. He coughs. Maybe a little worse. Worse? What he said to us was pretty bad, though. He tried to burn me with a cigarette once. See, when you tell me shit like that, I don't feel bad about any things I did to his worthless ass. Ag Again, I'm like... Okay, what's in my room that's making that noise? I'm saved from having to respond to that as the timer goes off. I turn around and put, pull my food out of the microwave before grabbing a plastic fork and sitting down next to Leo. We eat in slightly awkward silence. The time I'm almost finished, I'm feeling a little nauseous. Ugh, not to be rude, but do you always eat this stuff? Huh? Looks up with a mouthful of mashed potatoes. This microwave dinner stuff. He swallows loudly. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, don't you like it? He lowers his ears again, looking embarrassed. It's fine. I mean, it's just sad. I look at him sheepishly. Heh, <laughs> you little fucker. I get better food sometimes, but this is just easier. Yeah. I drag the plastic fork through the flaky potatoes. And what qualifies as better food? The diner? Hey, it's not like you can afford it. I make good money, like I can't afford it. I laugh. This isn't about money. It's I just think you're lazy. Leo Mon growls and leans over to grab me. I hope theatrically and try to hold on to my tray steady as he yanks me sideways and lay down against him, our heads on the armrest. Hey, I gotta throw away my tray. It's full of gross TV dinner water. Leo nuzzles into my neck. Mmm, put it on the floor. Ew, gross. You can throw it away when I'm ready to get up. Since when do you decide when I can or can't get up? Ew, ew. Since you decided to mouth off to me, now, the one that's going to be cooking all of my meals and clean my house, Shurla. I shiver as he responds by spooning me tighter. Clearly, Leo's gagged that I'm past the point of resisting. Gaged? Oh, gauged. Point, past the point of resisting at this point in my little vacation and taking advantage of it. Estoy loco por ti. I think that means you're crazy for me. Let's actually look that up. Google Translate. Spanish to English. Estoy loco por ti. I'm crazy about you. 
Okay, I was close. Nice that face. He rose the R dramatically. Definitely taking advantage of it. We were both too tired to do anything more, which is probably for the best, and with a few minutes, I've passed out. I have to say, that is a good time for it, because we hit the 30 minute mark, it's a scene change, and it's Friday. Because it's Friday, Friday, gonna go out on Friday. Don't want to get DMCA striked. Anyways, that's going to be the end of this Let's Play. So anyways, please comment, because I like comments. Tell me if you like, dislike, tips, tricks, otherwise, if you... Even though there isn't tips here. Well, actually, there could be tips. But anyways, that's a different kind of tip. Um, if you like Mayjube and like it grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the videos to help it grow. And please remember to spay your animals to help control the pit population. And until next time, let's wait. Me, Nemo, Six of Echo. Oh, and if you want to play this game, it's free on HIO. And if you want to support people that made this game, go to Patreon. Also, I think I see liquor right here. If I had a place, I wouldn't have liquor in it because, you know, if you have it, you drink more. Uh, but if you don't have it, you really have to want it to, you know, get it. And I'm trying to get off this stuff. Hyena. So, thanks and see ya.